We are live. Cool. Let's give it a sec. Has someone got the uh, the volume on the background of the Facebook page? I just turned it on to see what it looked like. It looks like it, it looks a hundred times better than what I'm looking at. All right, perfect. All right, so um, here we are, FBS Live, doing something a little bit different. Um, welcome to everyone uh, who is joining us this afternoon. We're going to be Streaming and re-watching the 2015 A-League Grand Final. It's going to be an FBS re-watchable. So over the next uh, 90 minutes or so, we're going to be re-watching the game. Chatting about uh, well, almost five years ago now, just the uh, the times back then. I think one of the, the best ever victory games. Uh, joining me are the boys, as you can see on the right-hand side of my screen. First, the chief analyst of FBS, uh, Dave Welcome to uh, FBS Live. Yeah, hoping that everything works out. Um, I think everything should be fine, apart from maybe connection issues, but I think that everything is okay. Um, but yeah, a shout out must go to our Patreon supporters who made this particular live stream possible. Um, without them, we simply wouldn't be able to afford the, uh, the the software that we're using to do this. So thank you to our Patreon supporters. Uh, your money gone to uh, and put to good use. Um, the man of the people is here as well, all the way in Watsonia. The man of the people, Bud, hello and welcome to FBS Live. Yeah, live and direct from the people's mansion here um, in, my, in my daughter's change room. So uh, this is my make if COVID-19 bunker for working from... Um, if, if you see me looking off screen, I'm actually looking at the phone because uh, what you're seeing at home is much better than what you're seeing on the screen. But I'm so excited to be here. This, this is one of the best games I've ever been to with anything, any yeah, absolutely. Okay. Right, okay. Give me a second. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, Alright, I can hear you perfectly, which is annoying. Uh... Okay, give me a sec. All right, well, luckily enough, there's a game playing in the background, so while I sort out the uh, the sound issues, you can just enjoy the sounds of the pre-match. Um, while we're doing that, we might as well get Buds to, uh, to set the scene. This was all the way back in May of 2015, so almost five years ago now. Um... Of course, one of the most famous Melbourne victory matches of all time, a 3-0 win against Sydney FC. A dominating season for the Vuck, uh, ultimately culminating in a double, the championship and the premiership as well. Buds, set the scene for us back in 2015. What was that season like in the lead-up to this particular match as well? So, obviously, we, uh, we did the domestic double. The turn of the year, um, let's say uh, just after halfway, things weren't looking fantastic while we did start the league 10 matches unbeaten we could not get better of perth glory perth were at that point in the season they were the team they had a dynamic duo in keo and marovic had a one lot 13 matches and sydney also had killer number 10 in mark yanko 
who was in form and eventually the golden boot with 16 goals. Now, for some of you that may or may not remember, Perth is second or third on 50 points equal with Sydney, but actually expelled from the final series and given a compulsory seventh place finish due to salary cap violations. Melbourne City and the uh, promoted Brisbane made the finals, winning only nine and ten games respectively. City shocked Johnny Warren medalist Jacob Burns' Wellington away in the first week of the finals, and we pumped them 3-0 in the semis. What I remember about the semi, most finish was stand by me. A lot of resistance came that year from the, from the majority of the Terrace regulars to this tune being force-fed by the club. If you remember the North Terrace trying to push three little birds for a while, which I was a big fan of, and for some reason, Stand By Me took off and the majority of the 50,000 who attended that game belted out. And boy, oh boy, was the rendition of Stand By Me this game, the grand final, unbelievable. Uh, it led the league for... 17 out of 27 rounds that season. We led the league for seven. Wellington led it for three. Sydney sat in fifth spot for 11 weeks and were fifth in round four. This season had a real feel to it. The way we dispatched Western, uh, Western Sydney Wanderers in one, four, one, to behold. We're, they were the reigning ACL champions and we just had a squad revamp like none in our history. This was one of the best seasons for competitiveness the A-League has ever had and the feel we got on game day every day straight up exciting boys are the only shit day of football this whole season in 2014-15 was that day we went to Cadinia Park and it was about 45 degrees mm. they, didn't have any, they had no catering facilities open so uh, while we pumped City a few times a year and Perth Spelled for the finals, we couldn't beat Sydney. We didn't beat Sydney once that season. It was nil in round six, three three in round ten. It was an Archie hat trick and a double from our arch nemesis Shane Smelt. And then in round seventeen away, Shane Smelt hit a double again, and it was a three three draw with Nick Ansell saving our bacon. We'd suffered heartbreak to these pricks, and surely, surely couldn't happen again on our day. Revenge. Yeah, so it was a Begala day too. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm muted still. I don't know. Um, punters, let us know on the, the chat if I'm still unable to be heard. But yeah, this was the, the build up to this game was just insane. Um, I remember having to walk through the, the Sydney FC travelling entourage of a couple thousand of them from one part of the stadium to the other. And it was tense. Like they were. Yeah, you know, bang for we were bang for blood. And then, you know, on the pitch, there was a lot of blood too. Um, yeah, so just let's see how we go on this. Um, I, think, I think that you're okay. I think that you're yeah. all good. Um, so you might... <laughs> Regrettably, we can hear you, says Tuna. So <laughs> good. looks like I'm up. <laughs> we're all good. So, I, think I, I think it's chopping in and out, boys. It's, yeah, it's chopping yeah. in and out. Yeah, Tuna, Tuna said, clear, says Rudy. Tuna said I had an uh, excellent monologue. Rudy seems to be able to hear what I said. Um, Tuna, look, can you boys, see the BWB scarf? Another big thing about this game was the, um, you know, the, the season we had with our imports. Bessart Barisha, Matthew yep. Del Pierre, Daniel Georgievsky, Fahid Ben Kafella. Uh, we'd had a huge turnover. We'd lost the likes of Contreras, Jimmy Jago, Rogic, Stella, Troisi. Adama Traore, Adrian Leia had left the club. Uh, we bought in spuds like Michael Turnbull. It was just, it was amazing. It was, it was Musket taking over from Ange and stamping his and Adam Arnold's seat for Sydney FC. And Arnie, uh, as those games that we did in Sydney, Arnie was at his peak of mind game. All right, I'm just trying to figure out the Twitter side of things. I don't know if it's going to work on Twitter. I thought that it was going to, um, but let's see if I can just get the Periscope link up. I don't know if I can. How's that for the no, Straight off the bat. Tough tackles. Yeah, no, nah, it's not. Looks like it's not going to work on Twitter. Oh, well. Um, it's the first time doing it. Yeah, so, sorry, oh, well. Twitter. What can I do? Hey, um... In terms of crowds, um, this was an amazing season as well. Look, uh, the semi-final that Bud's talked about, 
earlier, you know, there was 50k at that at that centre. And, you know, and of course, this game was a complete and utter sellout. Uh, members rewarded you know, the circumstances of us having to play at Amy Park. You know, we can look back on this date because, you know, I mean, it, it'll probably happen again in the future, but given every finals experience, you know, grand final experience particularly, was at uh, Docklands, uh, this was a special day, uh, not just from the result perspective, but just the sheer, sheer power and volume, walls of sound that uh, every single one of that 25 or 26 odd thousand created. Yeah, I yeah. guess I, the, the week before Stand By Me was kind of accepted and this day it became legitimate and it's probably been legitimate ever since. I've, uh, I've, I've never, ever experienced anything quite like that. This was a heartfelt and emotional by every single person. We wanted those pricks to make it known that this was our home ground. So, amazing. Hey, Budza, you can see the, the, the Buck game better on your phone uh, than the actual feed that we've got on our uh, devices. Uh, but I don't think it's quite in it's sync. A delay. That's the problem. Yeah, it's a bad yeah. 10 second delay, yeah. Um, just a reminder for anyone as well, you, you see just uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, we do have a call-in number. It is my American number, but if you call in on WhatsApp, it is a free call. So if you want to give us a call throughout the, um, the next hour or so, next hour and a half, um, just to chat about... The VUC, the season that was, this game in particular where you were, how you remember the day. Um, talk about this team as well. You can give a call and um, we can patch it straight through uh, to the live feed as well. So get involved and I'm get sure amongst that, it. I'm, I'm sure yeah. that'll work just smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it'll be all right. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah. Um, so do we talk team lineups in this particular game uh, at all? We haven't yet. No, but let's. Um, you want to you set the scene, Dave, with the team lineup. This, to me, is the best side we've ever had, and I mean, Del Pierre. We we often talk about him as the best central defender we've ever had. But if you look at this midfield, that trio: Carl Valeri, Mark Milligan, Guy Finkler. Like that, that is absolute zenith of, of, you know, underpinned really by the fact that Milligan, you know, ran the show out here on the, on this day uh, alongside Carl Valeri, who you look at what we have now in 2020, um, absolute polar opposite of the combination of power in the midfield and graft, but also that creativity at the top of it with Finkler. So we start with Lawrence Thomas in goals. And controversially, um, some might say Guerrier didn't get the nod ahead of Broxham at right back. Again, I think that's when we at FBS started that whole narrative of, you know, he won't be in the first 11 at the start of the season, but by golly, will he be in it by the end of it? And uh, he certainly made his impact known in this game. So Nick Ansel partnered Del Pierre and uh, much loved Daniel Georgievsky at left back. And early on in this game, just watch how much he bombs forward. In fact, you know, both fullbacks, how much they get involved in the play, uh, overlapping runs. So, yeah, and in the midfield, I already covered off on them, but Costa Barbarousas, FBK, and Barisha, you know, up top uh, in, in it's what was basically a 4 2 3 one type setup or 4 3 3. So, yeah, uh, amazing lineup. Uh, I think we were talking when. We did the um, FES 2010s decade uh, little series. When I was talking to Rudy Edsel and we we're doing kind of the uh, the decade awards, we were talking about who had the best individual season throughout the decade. And I think we ended up ultimately landing on Leroy George. But that Fahid Ben Kelfali year uh, in this particular season was right up there with probably the best individual season performance uh, we've ever seen from a victory player. Um, do, you, do you agree with that, Dave? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Apologies, I was just adjusting some screen stuff then. Uh, Budza, sure. if you actually click on the the little thing in the middle, the yellow thing, you get sort of half of me and half of the, the, the uh, footage, and I think it is better res slightly when it's like that, but it's still pretty shit. Nah, no good. Bugger. Sorry, Jace, oh, sorry. ask I... that question again, mate. 
I was just talking about the the best ever individual season. You know, we might have players that come with us, come to us for for a year or two, um, and, and play a really blinding season. I thought for Ben Calafella's first year with us was uh, was absolutely unreal, up there with Leroy George for for one of the best ever individual seasons for for a victory player. Just a class above, like and. If you remember the context around him being signed, he was the final foreign signing and um, not, not a hell of a lot was known about him. Uh, but just an incredibly calm on the ball sort of player, really crafty player, like that, the sort of player that you know, doesn't have to actually do that much, but when he does have the ball, something comes out of it. You know, he's just always looking for something a bit tricky to do. Very intelligent player. Um, I guess the difference with the Leroy George situation and FBK is that as a team, we were much better as a team during FBK's time with us at the club, whilst Leroy George stood out in a season that we, you know, we, we scraped into finals and, yeah, we won um, the grand final, but you know, we didn't really deserve it and we were nowhere near the best side over the course of the season. So, yeah, it's one of those... It's almost apples and oranges when you, you compare the two because as a unit, we were just incredible in this particular season and FBK was a part of that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So where are we up to in the game? We're at uh, about seven minutes in. Uh, so Yeah, and it's pretty blurry for, for us, blurry. I have okay, to say. Well, I'll just tell, Don't you have to guys, say to tell you guys what's well, look, happening. I, I know the game very well, thankfully. Yeah, so. This is the first time I've rewatched it, but... Um, the more I think about it over time, I just think that this game just ages better and better as time goes on, especially given the um, the plight of the uh, the recent season or the season that was. Uh, this this game just really just kind of shows that how, the victory at its peak. I know we you know dominated the the two thousand and seven grand final six nil, but I just can't think of a better performance than this one, a better team than this one. So just. Absolutely amazing to uh, to rewatch this for the first time. Uh, we've got a bit of uh, handbags between Yanko and Milligan. Mark Yanko, like, kind of like the uh, the Ola Toivonen before Ola Toivonen uh, came in and uh, was had a really good season and was a was a real threat for Sydney in in this match. Um, didn't ultimately score, but had a had a close chance towards I think maybe yeah. the, the the second half or late in the game. Yeah. Uh, he was shit. He was shit in this. Final. He was he absolutely shit. Thanks um, to He he did barely anything, and he went on to have a a, a career after Sydney FC as well. He ended up getting a really plump at Sparta Prague for a while too. He was a he was a real star in this league. He was a high national at the time. Yeah, he was a high pedigree player, and just then another you know, he won in the long line of really good strikers that Sydney FC. Yeah, there was so much uh, animosity in this game. Uh, you know, quite a few tasty tackles early on. People, obviously, both teams really trying to assert themselves early. Um, and you know, I think I think it was Matt Yerman at one point basically had to have his head bandaged. Nick Ansel had to get treatment. There was a lot of uh, animosity on the pitch in this game, um, and thought it was you know well refereed. That's that's one thing that's uh, obviously it's always good when you win, um, but generally speaking, I thought the way the game panned out from a, an chatting perspective, and, and just as I say that, I think that was one of the moments where one of our guys took another hit. Uh, there's a lot of that in this game. Yeah, we are about ten minutes in. Um, victory with a few early chances, which is uh, which is good. Del Pierre down after a bit of a head clash. I'm just coming to you, boys, because you can't Jace, see. Jace, is there a way for us to um, enhance the the vision? I'm just trying to figure out. Is there yeah, I'm, here? I'm trying to look on the the settings, but there's no, uh, there's nothing for me to actually change the the resolution of the um the vision. Um, so it could just be the internet connection. Um, unfortunately, I think it's your shitty Los Angeles internet, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Funny old day in LA, huh? 
Uh, well, today, yeah, I guess there was a stabbing outside my house about <laughs> uh, an hour before, about an hour before this stream, um, yeah. which which perked me up because, as, as I said to you guys in the, the group chat, I was I was falling asleep. It's just gone past twelve thirty in the morning here, um, LA time. So I was trying to um, to get myself up for this. And I was falling asleep, and then I woke up to eight cops just screaming at a guy outside my window with their guns drawn on him and he's on the ground and there's like eight cop cars and I was I was kind of dozing off I was half asleep half awake and didn't realize that literally probably about seven cop cars um, had turned up just outside my house and it was just uh, absolute pandemonium for for a few minutes so it perked me up a fair bit so I'm ready to go um, for this uh, Budza where, where were you You're obviously at this game Take us through the, the grand final day as we kind of see a, a chance. Barbarousas has a, Barbarousas, has a chance which he probably yeah. should have put away uh, in the 12th minute. Probably should have put that one away to get victory off to a golden start. Mark Milligan uh, was an absolute boss in this game. Uh, he uh, wins the, uh, the Joe Master medal. But uh, Barbarousas with an early chance doesn't put it away. Um, yeah, Buds, what was your grand final day like in 2015? Uh, look... For for many years, I, I'd had a policy of never having the misses with me at a game, because I like I like to enjoy the game my way. But um, I uh, I got tickets for her and some friends to to this. We got a spare few barcodes, and uh, in true um, in true style, she was late. And I don't know why they've still actually still got this fucking brain dead policy. Um, but they had the policy going of uh, only having your tickets picked up at the venue. Yeah, if you remember in 2015, they, they've or beforehand they've rela- at Ticket Tech. Ticket Tech. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Stuff. They've re- they've relaxed it to be like that. But at that point oh, okay. in time, all the boys were still being very naughty in the terraces, and they wanted to keep tabs on every single person at every single seat. And you know, it was still very, uh, it was still pretty draconian. That it was, was the uh, the day of the. Uh, Famous uh, the balaclavas, uh, that yeah. photo of uh, yeah, that, that, the boys. Those, uh, those, those enduring images under the uh, yes. the swan, uh, uh, under the Punt Road Bridge. So anyway, um, she was like, I actually remember you were texting me saying, "Fuck you, Jason." You were texting me going, "You better hurry up. Our area is filling up very quick." Oh, uh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And this I was is always like, the way. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, and. Um, you know, I'm a very level-headed, very patient, calm person. And uh, as it was getting closer and closer to the kickoff time, I was remaining ever calm and very, 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 very level-headed and uh, wasn't concerned at all. Um, they, they're complete lies. I was fucking losing my shit. <laughs> and um, we finally got in in time, finally got to see Stand By Me, but there was a lot of anxious uh, moments trying to get into the into the ground but um i was standing with you guys in the in the northern terrace uh probably about i don't know hey, what uh, we, five or six from the back five or six rows from the back just premium at the perfect angle for the best art barisha goal and so this is that moment right now where uh i think uh, yeah yerman and barisha clash yeah. and i think this was this was actually perfectly executed by Bess if you if you look at it, it hits him flush in the face but still makes it look incidental in a way um did get a yellow card for his troubles uh yeah there it is <laughs> and um you know this from from this point on Yerman had to deal with that uh gaping hole in his head for the rest of the game so and this is what I was talking about before the game just had these flashpoints uh and as the first half progressed, we just took complete control. And I think we won this physical battle. What I would give for us to be able to win these kinds of physical battles and boss a team on the park, and it all starts in the midfield with leaders like Valerian and Milligan. Uh, and I like Bess, who, as you can see there, blood on the elbow. Not his, I don't think. But, um, yeah, you know, he, put, he put himself about, didn't he, Bess? Gee, I miss him. Someone's just asked on the uh, the comments, um, what beer am I drinking? I'm actually drinking Red Bull. I need uh, need Red Bull to keep myself going. Uh, I did have I did have uh, tequila and a margarita mix ready to go, but um, I got through that during the day. So no buds is on the goat cans. No yeah, alcohol for me. Get onto the whiskey soon. Surely, they, surely they've got other other things in LA that could help you get through this, Jason. <laughs> 
No, nah, not, not today. Not today. Um, <laughs> I actually got in a lot. I got in a lot of trouble at, you gonna... uh, at, for this uh, after this game with um, with work because it was a Sunday Sunday night grand final. I remember I took a half day um, of annual leave. Um, or I arranged to do a half day of annual leave for the Monday and. I remember after this grand final, it was just such a such a great performance, and you really would just want to celebrate that. So I partied so much that I had to turn that half day into a full day, and I got in a shitload of trouble, especially because I was telling everyone what I was doing, and it was I think it was a really busy day at work, so um, I got in a shitload of trouble for for kind of on the fly, like 9 a.m. saying, "Oh, I can't actually come in today at all. It's it's going to be a full day." Um, you were the king of the Monday sicky, though, aren't you? You were the, you were the oh. king of the Monday sicky. I was. I was until I had a until I had a child, and then the work ethic, the work ethic uh, came out of nowhere. I started actually going to work. I don't think I've had a, an actual sick day in like two years now. I think it was just oh maybe it's about two years since I found out that I was going to be a dad. So since then, I haven't really taken many sick days. It's amazing what happens when you actually have some responsibilities. Yeah, I remember I was at the start of my new career. Uh, I was. A year, oh, probably six months out of uni, and I was—I just finished my internship, and I was, uh, you know, of this new mindset of, you know, I'm, I'm out of the kitchen, I'm uh, never going to up to work, hungover. This is a new me, super serious, super serious. <laughs> and I turned up. And it was a big one after this. Yeah, it was. I remember a huge standing. One. I remember standing at the espresso machine with my uh, with my boss, my new boss then, and. He asked me what I'd done, and I, I told him, and I was honest. And he just looked at me, and goes, "You would have been fucked, wouldn't you?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes." And he was completely accepting of it, and I was just a flutter in my heart, uh, and the anxiety left, and I got to relax for the rest of the day. But yeah, it was, it was a very rough Monday, a very rough Monday. Just more wisdom from the FFA to have these things on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think, yeah, this was just a, I guess the venue and the day was just a complete schmozzle. Uh, ordinarily, this would have been played at Etihad Stadium, but I think there was an AFL match during this day, and I think this is the time as well, just going back to the match, uh, Yark Fatty is just about to um, to be substituted off with an injury. I think it was a hamstring injury. I thought this was pretty pivotal. I thought he was, I thought it was a decent, I thought it was a decent player, and um, I thought this was a, a bit of a changing point in the match, and I think Ryan Grant... Yes, yeah, I was um, about to say, he's, look at Ryan Grant's hair, yeah. much more respectable at this stage of proceedings in his life. Unlike so, yeah. what he's running around with now. Had but yeah, Jacques Fati and Yerman. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But he'd been at the club for seven years uh, from memory and at that time, mm. um, obviously, um, you know, much like, I guess, Broxham for us. Um, but yeah, so Yerman... Gets his head split open. Jacques Fati, his central defending um, partner, has to come off and they've got to reshuffle. So, you know, again, another little flashpoint, another little battle won for us in the context of the game. Terry Antonis is also on the bench for Sydney in this game. Comes on about the 75th minute. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so Jacques Fati... um, he, they had a, they had an interesting array of foreigners. We haven't really talked about them. They are Mikhail Tavares, Dimitrovic, uh, the Serbian bloke at left back. Uh, what's his name? Pet, Petkovic, and you know, obviously we've talked about Yanko. But a pretty, you know, this was around the time when Sydney, you know, they had constantly nailing their, their foreign signers. You know, after this, they, it was Mezhievsky and, um, and guys like that, and obviously Lafondra now as well. They're, they're, Really, after I think this really stung them, you know, losing it yep. the way they did, humiliated uh, ultimately. Yeah. They even brock some scoring. They also had a uh, foreign signing who was Melbourne Vic's nemesis, and he was the only person that I was absolutely shit scared of on this day. And he'd scored two doubles against us that season, and it was Shane Smith. Yeah, and he, had, he ended up coming, and I think it was a maybe 2 0, it might have even been 1 0 that he came on. Yeah, 64th minute he comes on. Uh, score against us. And he ruined us, no matter what side he played for, whether it was Wellington or Gold Coast or Sydney. FC, uh, he would ruin us, Shane Smeltz, and uh, I was terrified of him. Yeah, uh, Rudy, Rudy comments has just said that that game at uh, Docklands <laughs> that we uh, 
that forced us into playing at Amy Park was Western Bulldogs v yeah, Fremantle. It was, it was the Bulldogs. 18,000 people. It was the best oversight in FFA history. And here's, here's Guy Finkler, boys. Uh, boy, do I miss his smile and the, just the, the way he went about it, that creative fulcrum. You know, could yeah. take a free kick. One of the better guests and on FBS this year, for sure. we nailed these signings. Yep. JP as well in the Yeah, th- in the that interview there. was just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Your interview game has really uh, stepped up this year, Jace, since you've taken over um, and doing them all on your own um, over the phone. So, yeah, this is... People talk about the whole self-isolating thing, but obviously we started that this season yeah. um, with you being over there in LA and uh, Buds and I having to work out a solution. And you know, thanks again to our Patreons who have made this happen. You know, everything you see in front of you right now is because of our Patreons. So um, it's amazing uh, to be able to do this for a laugh. You know, um, yeah. those of you who haven't been uh, following. VS for that long, you know, all, all this started of us just shooting the shit at the pub and wanting to, you know, we, the way we talk about the games afterwards, beforehand, everything, we wanted to kind of capture that and bottle that into a podcast and, you know, we started off very amateurish and here we are now uh, doing a uh, rewatchable, which in, Bud, Bud and I can't actually watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, luck- luckily enough, uh, you guys rem- hopefully remember the game uh, well enough. Guy Fink was just oh, about mate. to take a corner here in the 23rd minute. I know, every blade of grass perfect. out there, mate. Perfect. Guy I'm going to get another beer. In. All right. So just a reminder as well for people that are just joining us. You can see a phone number at the bottom of your screen. It's an American number, but you can call in to us on WhatsApp. It is a free call. Um, so yeah, give us give us a call. We've got another what seventy minutes to kill. So give us a call, uh, have a chat with the boys and myself, um, talking all things victory on this uh, historic day, the twenty fifteen A League Grand Final, a, a thumping win for Melbourne Victory. Um, what are you on, Dave? What what beers? I'm on the uh, Three Ravens New England IPA. Mm-hmm. Um, someone just asked a question coming through on the Facebook uh, Live, Cameron McKenzie. If you do have any questions as well, just pop them through on the uh, the Facebook comments as well. Um, Peak Finkler versus Pink Hernandez. Uh, sorry, Peak Hernandez versus Peak Finkler. Um, who are you taking? I'll take Peak oh. Hernandez. Yeah, same. Uh, it's such a tough question because we have um, <laughs> often thought about this. Uh, yeah, and both delivered in spades both in terms of entertainment and trophies. So yep. it's one of those things where, in terms of their achievements, they're neck and neck. But I think Hernandez, for mine, just because that extra dynamic element and presence that he had to absolute score worldies. Um, Finkler scored a lot of good goals, but you know, quite a few of his most spectacular were set pieces. But Carlos would just bang them in from anywhere uh you can forget that one in gold coast um yeah so it's hernandez for me as well yeah i i always kind of made the case that finkler was um was better from set pieces as as good as carlos hernandez was and as you said the ability to score worldies was uh was second to none but i think that finkler was more consistent with his free kicks um and scoring from them so I, i'm i think hernandez overall but finkler Certainly very, very close to, um, to matching that. Um, some people wanting Chris Bentley to call in, Beanhead. Um, if, you're, if you're listening, if you're here, give us a call. Have a chat about the victory. Uh, no one better place than, uh, than Chris Beanhead Bentley to chat all things victory. One of the best, uh, one of the biggest super fans going around. This, hey, um, guys, the, um, yeah. the, the, the Prime Minister has just... Um, reduced outdoor gatherings to two people or less so we should probably do more podcasts and watch more games because uh everyone's now being forced indoors so let's well, this do this works, which i think it is kind of working to an extent you guys can't actually see the vision but if it does work um then i think we'll probably do another couple over the next few weeks what would you want to see next i'm thinking uh maybe Maybe the Antonis, the Antonis game. Ooh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that one. Like, I, I, <laughs> we'll be I'd, there a I'd, while. Yeah. I'd love to do the Another five nil point. Sydney season one, but we can't yeah. unless someone can find us the game somewhere. Yeah, I think another there's flash point here. Yeah. Finkler absolutely trod on there by Yerman. Um, there were studs in that. But yeah, bleeding as well. Obviously, the, the Antonis game, we, we call it the Antonis game, but um, that uh, sent freaky semi final win. Um, it'll be a long podcast. Extra time. Yeah, it would be because it goes into extra time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll just we do extra time. It. Yeah, we we'll can do extra time. Extra we'll start, time. It, start at second Had half. Enough maybe. entertainment. Yeah. Seb Royal, boys. Uh, yeah. Talking point for this game. Oh yeah, you, I, I feel I feel bad paying out on him now with uh with the story he came out with a few months ago. Uh, he uh it definitely took a toll on him all the shit that was flung at him from the uh, the yeah. stand. But he definitely gave it to us. He definitely didn't uh he didn't hold back when he played against us and he had a decent performance. Yeah, and he very often did. Too. Yeah, he, he did had, play all right. I've always played out of his skin against us like. Yeah, you mentioned Smelts before. I feel like Smelts, Matty Thompson, who are some of other players who just, they'd always find a way against us. Jamie Harnwell. Uh, Harnwell. He was probably the first one. <laughs> Labano score, Haliti. Labano Haliti, that's right. Yeah, because wouldn't score Set. all season, but then would bag a brace against yeah. us. Yeah, he braced us a few times. Ball against guys. <laughs> so what was that? <laughs> Vinny Lear scored a double against yeah, this. Uh, he did. Any, any, anyone who wants to have their day out has it against us. So I think um, at this point in the game, yeah, you can just hear Simon Hill talking about it now. Um, you know, in terms of territory and the amount in which we were the team playing football and trying to assert ourselves out there, dominating, and there's uh, Yerman getting touched up again. Uh, that was that was you know a real like, it was a battle this game and in this particular moment and as we're approaching that opening goal you know it's coming pretty soon. Someone actually mentioned before, can we put the volume up for that for the to hear the crowd reaction to Borussia's goal? But, uh, I don't know if uh, we're testing our luck there, Jase. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to make too many alterations to the live feed. I, I think yeah, I'd be pushing my luck if I did that. But we might just shut up when he uh, when he does score, which is coming up in about yes. about six minutes six or so. Minutes, yeah. Um, 30, someone did ask as well. Minute. Someone did ask as well through the Facebook comments. Thoughts on this kit? Was it our best ever kit? Well, definitely wasn't the best sponsor, CTI. What happened to CTI? They went out of business, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah, as another uh, did flashpoint. Yeah, we had some another some hooking. interesting uh, sponsors over the time. Intralot, I think, as well went out of business. And Energy Watch, um, I think uh, the owner had a racial tirade or something like that on social media at the time that uh, they were sponsoring the VUC. Um, I think Energy Watch coincided with uh, Harry Kuehl's, uh time at the Victory as well, which is a dark time for for Melbourne Victory. Uh, yes, Santino, I did get your text on WhatsApp. Um, hello to uh, to Santino uh, and also Keith, who's watching. He wanted me to give a cheerio to Keith. So, uh, hello, Keith. G'day, Keithy. Don't Chris do Bentley yourself a is, mischief, mate. Chris Bentley is watching as well. So, um, give us a call into WhatsApp, Chris Bentley, if you are, if you want. Quite a few punters in the chat. We've got yep. Victor Brinkat. Where have I heard that name before, Victor Brinkat? I don't know. Oh Jesus! I didn't. I can't remember. <laughs> Nick Ansel. Nick Ansel Pour, got his face split open. Of blood. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. Fair bit of claret there. Yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, a question from Tristan Sewell: If you could take any player from this side and slot them into this year's squad for the biggest impact, who would it be? Good question. Carl Valeri. Oh yeah, Mark Milligan or Mark Milligan, Carl Valeri. Take your pick. Well, need Mil- that anchor yeah. in midfield. Mil- Milligan. Th- there's a. There's a. I'm trying to recall if it – I think it happened already in this game or, or it's on its way. Millingen just – his ability to, to create sort of defence-splitting passes, you know, because he wasn't just a hard man in midfield that could break up play. He was also quite creative in, in terms of his delivery. Um, 
Yeah. I, I I would take a peak Milligan in this current squad because you would definitely see an improvement in Basher. I think Basher yeah, would be a much cool. better, much much better player. If if you had Milligan and Finkler in front of Basher, um, he would he would be a much better player. I think we would probably be a far better team. Oh, oh goes without saying, we would be a far better team. So, Brian Grant, yellow card, studs yep. up challenge. There's just been. A litany of moments in this game. It's like blood on the pitch. It was insane. Such and, pure a great do- game. and complete domination by Melbourne Victory up to this point as well. I think uh, exactly there was a stat on the on the screen before. I think it was seventy percent possession in the first twenty five uh, minutes or so. So just Victory in complete control, and and Sydney not really posing too much of a challenge. Uh, Victory now kind of attacking over and over through that um, that right hand side, which coming, uh, eventually yields a result in, in just a moment's time. Yeah, just to, to, to lead us up to the to the moment, you know, like we had. Remember, I was talking about the the fullbacks, uh, Broxham and Georgievsky. You know, Broxham basically managed to get himself fairly advanced, and it was a fortuitous kind of moment when. It fell Barisha's way. As uh, I'll shut up now, and uh, we'll watch it unfold. Everyone. Yep. Got a few questions coming through as well, which we'll get to after this goal in just a moment. Andy Harper just uh, talking about the victory domination. He's just absolutely. I'm dropping a fire blanket. On him. <laughs> he can't believe it. He can't believe he's fired up. Yeah, he's so annoyed, isn't he? He's, he's good for these. Though. I reckon Andy Harper's a good commentator for, for for games like this. He's he's emotive, and I think that uh, sometimes you, you don't get the uh, the colour man in a league uh, commentated commentating circles to be uh, too emotive. Um, so Here we go, boys. I'm into it. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Oh yeah, Brox. There go a bit of pinball. Barisha, goal! Oh my god! <laughs> Come on! The third grand final, the big moment, man. The big ticket, Bessar Barisha <sighs> draws first blood in the 2015 A League Grand Final. Melbourne victory, a one nil up. In the 34th minute. And, and Swan Street Stadium goes bananas. 29,000 at Swan Street Stadium are going nuts. They are hey, everywhere. Just saw, just saw it on the replay. Just saw it in uh, high definition. <laughs> Beautiful. What a finish. Uh, it was sensational. Now let's what talk a feeling about, that was. Let's talk about the, the signing of Bess Outbrush. This is his first year at Melbourne Victory. Uh, Anthony De Pietro goes out and uh, headhunts the number one striker in the league, brings him to Melbourne Victory on marquee money. And it was all for this moment to score the opening goal in a grand final. Yep. Di Pietro's plan pays dividends. Well, it was Bang. also Brisbane Roar's was Brisbane Roar's fault too because they weren't they weren't paying him they weren't paying him the big bucks and and we uh we needed it and we did. Um, yeah, we got the inside a... we got the inside word that it was happening a couple of weeks before it was announced. Yeah. Um, and uh, I couldn't again, believe Peter. it. I could not believe it. And this is yeah, I don't want to talk about this too much, but a problem with the A League um, and the salary cap. Um, you know, I mean, I'm obviously absolutely chuffed that we had best for the time that we did. But you know, you want clubs to be able to you know increase player wages in these sorts of circumstances. Um, man, replay. What a <laughs> yeah, yeah, no chance. And we were we were at that angle. I was behind yeah. this angle perfectly. It was outrageous. And there was just in the, one of the previous replays that had the sound of the whoosh just on slow-mo going into the back of the net. Uh, a thing of beauty, this one. Now we have to wait about uh, another 50 minutes <laughs> for another minutes. goal. Yeah, 50, <laughs> yeah. minutes plus, uh, 50 plus half time. Yeah. Um, Bess was nearly crying 
Uh, you sort of see him celebrate like a madman, and you can see Carvalieri out there just trying to keep everyone calm, and you know, everyone's celebrating like mad. But you know, Bess in in the way that only Bess can. You can just see the emotion in his face. You know, he's just such an emotional man. You know, for better or worse, on occasion. But wow, what a day this was! Absolutely, Bess Abrisha. The marquee man gets the uh, the first goal in the the grand final. We just had a question come through just before that goal on uh, on the Facebook comments, just talking about uh, unrelated to this match, but just uh, what's been going on with Perth Glory. Uh, their players have been stood down uh, yeah. amid the coronavirus uh, pandemic that's going on at the moment. Um, Dave, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that uh, this is a sign of things to come throughout the league? Well, that's what Tony Sage has come out and said. He says, you know, are you guys insane? This is, uh, you know, he's just ahead of the curve on this. That's a common phrase at the moment, the curve. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, look, um, I think it's, it's, it's a tough one. I, I, I want to be critical of him. He hasn't had a good few weeks when, when you consider all that crypto bullshit. But, um, you know, him, he, the, the potential sale of Perth Glory and all of that, and now this, uh, and then he had a little apparent but not really social media gaffe this morning but yeah yep. it's it's hard to like I, I don't want to totally um go hard on him because he's pumped so much money into that club over the past what nearly 10 years i think probably more like seven or eight years but you know it's 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 one of those situations where it's like you can understand what's going on but the pfa have rightly come out and you know in defense of the players it's it's I don't quite understand why he's doing this, given that the season's pretty much done. Uh, you can, you don't have to, I guess, stand, stand down players indefinitely. You can actually work out a solution like some of the other sports have done. I think what you can take from all this is that he was already wanting to get out um, by virtue of this whole attempt of selling the club. So he's clearly just packing up uh, taking his bat and ball and uh, wanting to go and using this as an excuse to do so. What do you guys think? Oh, look, Tony's Tony's not had a good month. Um, you know, I'm sure he's got a few LFE tokens he can he can <laughs> give to the players. Um, but look, uh, you you got to understand it from his point of view that it's corporate chaos at the moment. It is chaos, and. Yeah. We also have to understand too that you know because they're sports players doesn't mean that they're entitled to be paid, like what we've seen with the AFL players and their fucking ridiculous demands. Like, I have people from my team that on Friday got told to log off, don't log on on Monday, and we'll call you when we need you back. And they're full timers and have poured, you know, their lives into their roles, and it's just the way it's happening at the moment. So. Why yeah. would a sports team? Why would a sports team be any different? Yeah, it's grim. All no matter which way you slice it, um, different businesses are able to absorb what is going on in the world right now. If you if you look at certain industries, be it hospitality, tourism, sports, um, all hit very hard by this. You know, the the hotels and the travel industry as well. It's it's grim, really grim. And, you know, I think let's just hope that most of these industries and businesses come out of it when it's all done and dusted and come out of it successfully uh, as, as close to as possible. Bernie Abini, uh, Jace. Yeah. Won, the, won a title with uh, Central Coast, I think it was, you know, two years before this one. Mm-hmm. And now finds himself back in the A League for next season, if next season goes ahead. He was very much uh, one of the key players for Sydney in this one, along with Brosk, alongside Yanko, and we absolutely nullified Abini in this game. From memory, yeah, it was Bro- Bro- Broxham. Uh, I'm trying to remember which side. I think he was on the left. So Broxham would have been man-marking for a lot of the time. But oh, there's and, and just seeing Graham Arnold's 
smug, dissatisfied for face on the sidelines uh, is is worth the entry fee of this alone, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just one of the one of the great things about it. Had uh, had the wood on him for for quite a while, uh, Graham Arnold, um, famously as well. I think before the, I don't know if it was before this game or it was before the the semi final, the 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 game that Terry Turner scored the winner, um, where I think some quote, quotes of his in the media um, in the week the week leading up to the match was uh, put on the the players' dressing room walls. I don't know if it was this game or the, the semi final, but. Um, was used as words of uh, motivation for the team to get one up on over Graham Arnold. It may have been even a different match, but yeah, a long running. No, it was uh, around then. Feud. It was yeah. around then. And look, um, I guess between Barisha's goal and uh, the, the second goal he's got, this game is a real arm wrestle. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, uh, both sides nullifying each other. Sydney did wake up a little bit here, but I still think, you know, obviously the first half we were clear cut. Uh, clear cut, um, you know, dominant side. Um, yeah. Uh, Nathan Copsey, Chris has just asked me how to make a WhatsApp call. Be ready, lads. Um, be fantastic if mm. we get some uh, some uh, call in. Some someone else call while we're waiting for Chris. Yeah, we can get oh, it's got to it's, it's got to be Santino. Santino, he's, yeah. He, yeah. Tino. I reckon uh, he's done about a hundred. Hundred messages already in yeah. the chat. We've dropped down. A, we've dropped seventy-two viewers now. Seventy-three. Just to, we were peaking. I think at about one hundred and seven. Yeah, not bad. Right. Maybe maybe people will come back uh, as the uh, the second half heats oh. up and we start to score some goals in the second half. Maybe we could do uh, two thousand and seven grand final because there are six goals in that. So maybe we'll do two thousand and seven grand final. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely not doing oh nine. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, that was a, a dire game, that's for sure. Yeah, all respect to uh, Tommy Pong. Yeah, Tommy but Pete. no. But no, no. I would even dare say we won't do the, the 28 E one either. There's there's no chance. Yeah, I think nah. that's uh that was good to be there. That moment and here where uh sorry boys, yeah, with the the, the, the header from midfield, Barisha but uh, side foots it to Barbarossa's uh, Barisha offside. I think that that was the last phase of play. But I oh, know, oh. yeah. yeah. Oh, geez, that would have been. Would have been good. How far off was he? I haven't watched this game at all on TV. I don't think I was at the game, but I don't think I rewatched it. And Archie Thompson on the oh, bench. Yeah, Archie Thompson on the bench uh, makes a late cameo. I think the the first sub in this game for for Kevin Musket was I think the 86th minute in true Kevin Musket uh, Musket <laughs> form. Just just waits until uh, the last. I think it was a bit early. Minute. Yeah, a bit early for Kev. <laughs> just a bit early. Yeah. You talk about Archie Thompson only getting a couple of minutes in the game. He um he celebrated the most out of everyone. Yeah, I definitely remember he was the best at so- him and Michael Turnbull. With the with the best uh, for That's the afterwards. right, our backup goalkeeper for this game. The um, so what, someone's uh, suggesting the 2016 elimination final against Brisbane just stop the game at the 80th minute, though. Um, if you've got some suggestions for what we should do next week or the week after, um, whether it be regular season games, I'm trying to think of some memorable regular season games that we can actually get our hands on uh, in terms of vision. I remember the. Uh, the three two, as a three, sorry three three against Central Coast in, uh, Central in season Coast one, two, yeah. but I one think of the great games. Any of those games are really tough to um, to get, and if they are, if, if they are on on hand, then they're probably pretty poor resolution going back um, fifteen years ago. Now, shit, it's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, Jan Yedovic, in this game was a liability for Sydney FC. Um, and we took the approach of trying to challenge him aerially quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I think this was because uh, he just it was a bit nervy. Um, Sally. Yeah. I think this was a chance to brosk from memory. Yeah. Not too much on offer for... Look how quickly! Half. Look how quickly the midfield actually takes ownership there. Like, mm-hmm. oh, and Barbarossa. <laughs> we haven't seen this in so long. 
Well, talking about Brisbane, who didn't want to pay Barisha and ended up losing him to, to victory, and you can probably say a similar situation happened with Costa Barbarusis this year with the victory. Uh, ends up going out and uh, making us pay. Did he score in all three matches against Melbourne Victory or each match that he played against us this season? He's, he scored definitely in two matches. Um, he did score the other week. Yeah, and scored he definitely in the first scored game. the other week. Yep. Yeah. Uh, have we paid him three times? I don't know if we played him three times. Maybe, maybe twice. He's definitely two, scored in two. Someone will let us know, but he's definitely scored in two. So that's the ultimate kind of, you know, fucking burn when we don't pay him what he wants and he ends up going off and, uh, and scoring. Yeah, but that's that's against... fine. He hasn't he hasn't won anything for them. No, he, he has. He has won nothing <laughs> and he won't win anything this year. It's the only, it's the only positive out of COVID-19. It's the only positive. But I'm sure that... that the FFA will find a way to award it to Sydney, at least the uh, the Premier's plate. Oh, they'll give them a special one. They'll they'll yeah. they'll make it even better for them. They'll hand deliver it and all. Well, this is a good question as well because you're you're a Liverpool fan, uh, waiting Ooh, yeah. your entire Topical. life for for the title. What are your thoughts <laughs> on what the Premier look League on should Buds's do? Face. What? <laughs> yeah, what should the Premier League do? <laughs> Doesn't want to talk about this. <laughs> uh, they they should finish the season. <laughs> They should definitely finish the season. <laughs> oh, that's a good chance. Shit. Laurie Thomas, a good save. LT. The best chance for Sydney FC with Alex Brosk. And Lawrence Thomas, yeah. who must be remembered. I, I was going to ask you guys later on in this um, live feed, who had the breakout moment in this game? And you could probably say Lawrence Thomas, well, not particularly this game. He didn't have much to do. But this final series, he really made a name for himself. He... he he created his reputation he's got today in, in this final series, uh, coming on for Nathan Coe, who, who was injured yeah. in the latest parts of the season, comes in uh, fairly unexperienced at the time, uh, inexperienced rather, and um, yeah, makes a name for himself. Incredible, yeah. Look, um, the, oh. you know, the, the shot from Brosk, um, it's half time now, obviously. Um, that was their only chance of the half. Um, so yes, yeah, in summary, summary, um, pretty edgy, edgy first half. Uh, we bossed possession, uh, and Sydney were sort of happy to play that pressure game. Uh, like most games in that sort of situation, the opening goal does change the complexion of the contest. And Bessart's finish, just a sumptuous, sumptuous finish. Um, yeah, I mean. It was a half chance at the end of the day. Uh, the ball bobbled to him in a bit of a ping pong kind of moment, and he just planted a powerful finish. Um, you couldn't ask for a better half. I mean, you could have obviously hoped for more goals, but you know, we got the job done in that half. Yep. So it's half time. Uh, it's going to change over to the second half in just a second. Um, they're just doing a few interviews, but um, I edited it so it just clicks over into the second half pretty quickly. Uh, just a quick back. note, just a quick note for people that are trying to call through. I just realised, thank you to Chris Bentley who just tried to call in, that my Australian number was still linked to my WhatsApp. So I've just changed it to my American number. So if you do actually call that number on the screen, it will work now. It didn't work the entire first half, but if you try and call now, it will work. Um, thank you. So I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get yeah, the whiskey. You can go get a go get some whiskey. Toilet break and uh, well, we're kicking off the second half. So hopefully get, Chris Bentley can call in now and I can have a chat to him. <laughs> Someone just asked, "Is uh, oh no, everyone's gone? Is Bud's going to spit some bars as the halftime entertainment?" I'll um, ask him when he comes back. All right, we've got a call coming through. Perfect. Hello, who's who's uh, who's on the phone? G'day, mate. It's Chris. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Welcome to uh, to FBS Live. How are you going, Jason? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just uh, watching the uh, the Vuck domination at the moment. Um, 
I'm sure that oh, you were at this shot. game. I'm sure you were at this game. What are your memories of it? I was. I was, I was right at the back of the, the old uh, victory end. It was good. It's like calling, so you've got someone to talk to since the other two just pissed off. Yeah, they've all gone to, to get some alcohol. Um, so, yeah, it's just me and you at the moment. Thanks thanks for your uh, for calling in and helping me out. Um, got to say, I'm really liking the backdrops. Yours is nice and professional. And then ooh. Dave's just got a collection of average scarves. Yep. And then Buds has just chucked a victory scarf over a, what looks like a pile of junk. Yeah, I think that's his uh, his baby's changing room, Buds. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in amongst all the baby stuff. Um, but, yeah, I've got the nice little banner here over here. Yeah, it looks very professional, Jake. Yeah, thank professional. you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You've to come our a long Patreon way since supporters. recording in your living room. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's been good this year. The uh, the remote podcasting. So thanks to our Patreon supporters who make this all possible. They make the the nice banner possible and uh, the the software to record as well. Um, we just saw Costa Barbarousas yeah, miss a chance to um, to ice it, ice the game. And, uh, yeah, Vitri starting off in dominating fashion again. Um, Beanhead, what were your thoughts, just not not just on this game, but let's talk about the season that was. Um, we expect that the A-League will ultimately be cancelled before another game is played. Um, what were your thoughts on the season as a whole? Uh, well, obviously, we had a shit one. Mm-hmm. The season itself, like, if you watch the rest of the games, the whole A-League was, was pretty good, aside from Sydney just dominating everything. But... Yeah, it's probably better to just cancel it for, as far as we're concerned. But yeah. you can't be awarding Sydney a title for it. I'm sure they will, but you can't be. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's, uh, that should happen. But uh, I think they may get a Premier's plate uh, out of it. Well, it's uh, the same possibly. as the Premier League. Yeah, Buds isn't quite back yet. So <laughs> they, but Buds is Liverpool. back. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully Liverpool I mean, don't get awarded a title either. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I'm not sure if you can hear Cut it them. off. Can you, Turn can it you off. Hear, can you hear the boys? Hang up. Uh, they say anything? <laughs> no, yeah, no. So I think I think they can hear you, but you can't hear them. So hang, the way, hang up. Yeah, I can, like hear him, him. I can hear I him. I can hear him. How you going? Yeah, no, the, he can't Good, hear mate. you though. So he's not connected to the. Um... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll take back what I said about the professionalism then. <laughs> well, we're trying our best. Um, before we, before we let you go, Beanhead, is there any questions you have for the boys? I'll relay a question to uh, to one of them. Uh, no, you probably covered it. I was going to ask what you think about the season, whether you think titles should be awarded, whether yeah. you should try and complete it. I don't see how there's any way we can complete it. But Yeah, no, I don't think so either. I'm sure they'll try. Yeah. I mean, have you guys, I tuned in a bit late. Have you guys discussed whether or not how you think it's going to affect Fox Sports, whether or not you think they're going to survive, or if you think TV deals are just going to dry up for professional sports? Uh, Fox, Fox Sports is dead. Um, we've seen with the amount of people that they've laid off in the last couple of weeks. Um, the AFL's in trouble. Um, the rivers of gold uh, in professional you, sport will dry off. <laughs> now, Buds is, Buds is talking, so you can't hear him, that's all. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Ben, thanks, thanks so much for calling you. in. Thanks for calling in. No worries, Jace. All right, catch you later. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Ben Ed. All right, the number is now operational, so if you do want to call in, uh, and chat to myself or the boys, um, feel free to. They'll be able to hear you, but you can't hear them. I'll just relay what's going on back and forth. Uh, all right, I'm going to go to the bathroom. You guys can talk amongst yourselves for the moment. Stinker of a game from Petkovic when it's all said and done. Um, early in that half, coughed up the ball. Finkler had the opportunity just to summarise what, what's happened so far. Then another mistake. Barbarousas had that opportunity as well. We came out breathing fire again uh, in this half as well. Um, I think we were still in the beer queues here, Budza. They had a lot of shit performances this day. Yanko didn't play well. Mm. Nomov didn't play well. Uh, Dimitrovic, Petkovic. It was it was just the lacklustre Sydney side that, that turned up. Do you know what? You know the the concept of uh, Kevin Bacon, six degrees of separation buds. You know that mm. concept. Yep. Naumov. What was his nickname? Oh, no idea, mate. You got me on the spot here. Kiki. Kiki, Kiki. Naumov. Where 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 have we heard that one before? <laughs> Kiki, Kiki was um. Kiki was indoors last night with a uh, with a large pizza watching Netflix. 
That's a pretty good way to handle this uh, current predicament we're all in. What are you yeah, watching on it. Netflix, buds? I had a crack at um, the Tiger King today, but uh, got a bit boring. So I watched I've, the new Mar- I watched a new Mark Wahlberg film the other night. Uh, I think it was Spencer Confidential. wasn't too bad. wasn't the worst. I'm gonna give that a go. I'll put that on the list. But um, I just finished up uh, the the English game. Got a caller? Oh, do we have a caller? No. If you're a fan of football and history, um, punters, uh, get on to The English Game on Netflix. I really enjoyed it. It sort of goes back to the 1800s when football was you know, sort of transitioning from being a gentleman's game in England to be, being you know, a proper professional thing and people getting paid for games. And I thought it was super interesting to get a sense of what that was like back in those days. I, being a history buff and being into my football, it was a nice meeting of those two themes. I really enjoyed that. It's only about seven episodes, I think, but uh, quite good. I don't watch it Substitution. Yet. Substitution. Substitution Sydney. Shane Smeltz comes on. 50 second yeah, there. Kiki Naumoff, uh, stinker of a game. Interesting time for Graham Arnold to make that sub. 51st minute. Um, I don't think Naumov was injured. Clearly tactical. But you look at the way this game was panning out for Sydney. Why He's waited six minutes into the first half to make that change. Naumov at that time was pretty young from memory. I think he would have been about 20 uh, yeah, at that time. Career cut short by, um, by some heart. Was a heart problem or something like that? Yeah. Something something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah, Namhoff didn't, uh, obviously didn't realise his full potential having some uh, some issues which uh, curtailed his career. But not a bad player, but as you said, not um, not really effective in this game as pretty much uh, most of uh, Sydney. Um, Cameron McKenzie's asked... Peak Smelts or Peak Archie? Good question. Both up there um, with the, I think, top three goal scorers in the A-League with Bessart Brucia. So three of the top uh, the top three, basically, are all playing in this match. Yeah, incredible. Three of the most prolific strikers of this particular era of Australian football. Uh, all of them. Uh, well, not Barisha anyway, but you know, Smelts went to a World Cup with New Zealand, and Archie obviously was part of the Aussie squads. Didn't really get much of a look in, but you know, yeah. I mean, it's funny. This after this grand final, you know, we did win that grand final, you know, in Newcastle, but I get the feeling like this was like zenith, you know, the real yeah. high point of our club in terms of recruitment tactics the team you know Ange had departed but you know there's a fair bit of water under the bridge once this season had actually kicked off in earnest and one it's so cliche to talk about foreign signings but in this particular period we, we nailed them all not a single mistake in terms of recruitment and we had youngsters that yeah, I mean, not not a great deal. Obviously, Jason Guerrier was more or less first team at that time. Uh, but the rest of the squad, you know, Nick Ansell, I think, what, what was he, 21 at this time? Yeah, very young. Uh, I think after this game, I think he may have injured himself. Uh, the foot injury, I think, in this match, which uh, ended up causing havoc for for the next few years for him for himself. Um, but, yeah, you say it's cliche, but... It's not cliche at all, really, because um, it just I guess really shows how much how, how important the foreign signings are. And if you hit on all of them, then you're you're going very close to winning a championship. If you fail yeah. on all of them, then you have a season like we did this year. It makes or breaks the season ultimately. If you if you nail four out of the five, I think you're going to be in for a good season. But this season, what did we nail? Nothing. Ola was already on the books. Yeah. Absolutely like zero success from any of the foreigners that we had. Well, H- Hoogland was probably unlucky because you can see the quality in the last few matches that he played, but ultimately just not on the pitch long enough. And I don't think that was anything that the club could have foreshadowed or, or foretold. Uh, he was, for all intents and purposes, a, a really durable player up until the, 
the day before the season is due to start and then he just has a, an well, awful horror run. Marco Kurtz, um, the training methodology uh, driving players hard into the ground, you know, right before the season opener this season, uh, we saw the news, like, what, two days before the game that Hoogland had injured himself at training. The night before, and yeah. That really, that one moment encapsulated, yeah, that, that one moment encapsulated the shitness of the whole season because that type of story kept happening. It was Naboo, then it was Cruz, you know, Toivonen at one point as well. Like, there's just a procession of injuries. Uh, and I think there's a certain point where it becomes a theme uh, and it, Definitely was the theme of this season. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, just a reminder for those people that are still watching, uh, I think we've got about 60 now. It is dropping a little bit. Hopefully people come back on as uh, as the uh, the goals. Get Should we skip ahead about closer. 20 minutes? I can't. I can't skip ahead. <laughs> I know. It doesn't just let kidding. me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, call in, call in if, uh, if you want. The, uh, the phone number that was on your screen is now operational. We had some issues with it in the first half, but it is all good and all ready to go now. So... Um, there are a lot of chances in this half leading up to this. It was an arm wrestle, but... Yeah, you guys yeah, were on when were... Um, Costa Barbaros has had a, had a side netting chance. Yeah. Which is probably the, the, the chance of the, the half. Any more questions? Keep me coming through on the Facebook comments as well. We'll, uh, we'll keep answering them over the next I've seen one. Uh, I've seen one asking what I'm drinking. It's uh, Glenn Livett, 12-year-old. I've got a little bit of tequila left, so we'll um, we'll see if we can get through that before before the end of the tequila game. Red Bull, Jace. You, you're combining the two. Now the Red Bull's gone, so I'm just on the tequila now. The Juanitos Plata. That doesn't um, sound Hispanic at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the, the the electric nature of this particular game in terms of being in the crowd. It was just yeah. unforgettable. Unforget the noise. I think Rudy mentioned it in the comments, and he's also mentioned it to me several times from his standpoint of the game. Milos Dimitrovic was actually shaken by the absolute passion and the sound that was just yeah. emanating from from the stands that day. Obviously, we had the whole of the north and the south. And in 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 that one away bay, sorry, the the one home end, instead of how we would normally have it, um, and that we, we're used to that because every away derby we kind of have that scenario. But this was yeah, just a, an amazing moment because it was everyone was getting involved and it was just the the true believers were here on, on this particular game because you know you couldn't get a ticket if you were a member pretty much i think that, yeah. that was how it pretty much panned out like if you weren't a member or knew or were in the family with a member or something like that you, you weren't going to this game because it was just limited um capacity yeah yeah and that also uh drowned out the sydney support too like sydney have always brought and good dogs. support with them and they um this one wasn't an amazing support for them so there was a reason that they were shook, and it was because it was a Melbourne home game. There was nothing neutral about the venue. There was nothing neutral about the crowd. It was a complete Melbourne home game. Milligan lashing at it and skying it over the bar as uh, Victory keep pushing for a second goal. Uh, someone asking, what's, uh, what's your favourite Victory chant? Do you have any favourite Victory chants? That's a good question. Um... Oh, JP yeah. just have a with a slag. He's a grot. JP, yeah, yeah, he just uh, just hocks a big loogie on camera. We've got um, him, and we've got Korea doing his farts. Yeah, it's just, I like yeah. Uh, I like Tafosi Melbourne. Yep, I always thought that was a good one. Um, Tits Fanny and football was always a classic for the old the old ones. Um, there's there's there's. There's victory chants that grind my gears a bit, um, but they're probably the fav my favourite. Oh, Barbarossus. Barbarossus again. Just touch, let him down. Uh, inside. Uh, see, That's, that uh, was just was a... That, was that Yeah, he Bessard shut or... the bed there. Whoever that was should have uh, just taken it first time and uh, put that through. 
I'm a, when it comes to chance uh, to the person that asked that question, much like my music taste, I'm a bit of an obscurist. You know, I, I, I like the, the, the oddball chance that maybe 10 people sing in the terrace and it never takes yeah. off. Remember that one in the South End that we did about Scott Galloway? Yep. That was a yeah, great the, uh, chant. The ledge, shout out to Remember the ledge that one, for that one. Oh. Galloway, Galloway. When yeah, he orders was, uh, fish, he orders yeah. John Dory. Dory. Yeah, it was this. There was the Phil Barlow chant uh, yeah. redone. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it was a good one. You're not giving yourself enough credit, buds. That uh, chant against Western Sydney Wanderers. Oh, another chance. Based on Twisted Sister. You're not going to Asia. You're not going to Asia. <laughs> that was a ripper. Um, all right. As for traditional buck chants in the South End, nothing, you know, like, yeah, it does grind my gears a bit now as well, like Buds, but, you know, a bit of when anarchy's going, like, you know, loud, uh, that can be fun. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favourite. What about you, Jace? Mm, uh, I like Horto. I like Horto. I get I get amongst it, especially uh, up up the back of the south end. If uh, if you try and be the ringleader to um to to lead the call and response after a few beers, you stand up on the seat. You try and lead the call and response to the the bottom of the uh, of the bay. Always good. Um, I think uh, no, there's there's a few good ones. I like. I like uh, the Human League, so I always liked Carl Valeri um, to the to the tune of "Don't You Want Me, Baby." Um, so I like that. I like the Human League. Yeah, I like the Human League. I like my '80s new wave. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to be honest with you here. I um I completely forgot to let the missus know how long this was gonna take. <laughs> um, she just she, she she just thought we were gonna do a thirty minute potty, so. I'm gonna to have to help out with the bath for the kid, right? But I'm gonna make I'm make sure I'm back for the 88th minute. Okay, cool. All right, All we'll right. see you soon. I'll see you in about 10:15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um I did forget. Uh, apologies to buds. I did forget that I've organised this right smack bang in the middle of uh, of babies going to, to to bed and having dinner and stuff like that. So apologies to um to buds. Thank you to Maria right. for for letting him do it. Uh, um, she should just bath the kid on her own, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Let me remind you, Dave, this that's is what my recorded. Wife's doing. This is recorded. Yeah, I know, but that's what my wife's doing. She's taking care of all that right now. I said, you know, it's important VUC business, so I've got to, got to you know, get my priorities right. Yeah, of course. well, your kids are a bit older. Uh, I know though. what it's like. I know what it's like. A yeah, little my bit kids easier. are a bit older. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate. Um, I'll tell you what, that, that yeah. I'm a I like isolation, right? Because yeah, I don't know, there's something in my personality. I'm quite I'm okay with like not interacting with people for periods of time. Like I'm I'm, yeah. I'm all right with that. But even even me, this is starting to starting to work. Like uh, starting, oh, he's starting back, to he's back, um, he's back, he's back. Oh, um, she, um, she's she's giving you a reprieve. No, nah, she's a warrior. She's an absolute warrior. She's like, I don't need you. I don't need you. I felt guilty. I felt guilty. That's what Dave said. He said, "I won't Dave, tell you what I said." Dave said he sh she should just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh, thank Timmy. you to uh, yeah, Timmy's Timmy. there. Thank you, thank Timmy. you to the wives. <laughs> oh, Timmy! I hope Timmy's watching. The, look at that. He was just giving it large. Timmy, he's at every game. Good on you, Timmy. I think he you guys are watching knows. the delay. Yes, we are. I have to. Yeah. I can't. I literally cannot make <laughs> anything out. You know what? Like we all we can see is like this blur of Amy Park. No, the, no, um, yeah. Thing I can up, make, so. I can, I can make out Alex Bross because he looks like a rat still. <laughs> um, and I can see the snake that is Van Janjevic as well. Timmy, Timmy, dead set knows someone at Fox Sports or or the cameraman yeah. at Fox Sports has yeah. just earmarked him one day and said, "You're the guy I'm always going to aim for." <laughs> Instead of a hot chick, we get Timmy. <laughs> Every single game. Yeah, home home and away. What a what a warrior, Timmy. And if, if you if you're watching upset. if you're watching Timmy, let us know how you get to every single game, yeah, please. Every every away game, Come on. are you uh, are you loaded or what? 
Is, it yeah. is, is the Fox Sports contact paying you so you can get some some images of uh, Victory fans in the crowd? Let us know. Yeah, yeah, he's here. Know who he is here. He is here. Timmy! <laughs> Timmy! <laughs> yes! Timmy, mate, how are you? Welcome uh, welcome on board. Let us know how you get to every away game because we see you in the crowd on TV every single game and we don't know how, how you do it. Let us know. Amazing. He's here. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. I reckon when it comes to Vux, there's not many bigger than Timmy. No, of and course. He, he goes, he's probably gone to more games than anyone. Yeah. I'll be yellow card. Of course, uh, the first of yellow cards this evening. Uh, a tip from Peter Lucic, uh, who of course is a, a Lucic, sponsor, not sponsor. Lucic. Lu <laughs> Lucic. Uh, who's a former sponsor of Lucic. FPS. Definitely Lucic. Lucic. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, uh, Pete. But um, if anyone is having quality issues on Facebook, if you um, click on the little settings cog at the bottom right and you force the quality to 720 pixels, um, it will improve it. I don't think it's going to happen for you guys on, on Wirecast, which is what we're using. Because I don't think yeah, any... call the uh, the owl IT for all your IT uh, support needs. Absolutely. Get a USB Greg cable. Easter, Greg Easter. Greg Easter. Yeah, 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 that's coming up. I don't think anyone's going to be celebrating Easter. Though. No, I don't think anyone's going to be celebrating Easter at all. Apparently, Donald Trump wants to. Oh, Tim has replied. Cheap flights and future payments on Booking. dot com help. So he's uh, he's planning ahead. He may, maybe gets a fixture. Um, at the start of the year and uh, plans out what he's going to do and books ahead of time. So if you are looking, as the crowd goes nuts, jumping for Melbourne Victory LA, um, yeah, if you want to go to every game like Tim, just book ahead. Um, the North East South West chant is immense as well yet, yeah, spot on. I remember, the, uh, I guess the peak of that was Season 2 Olympic Park yes. against um, New Zealand, New Zealand Knights when we wrapped up, wrapped up the Premier's plate. That was probably the first... The first time it kicked off and the um, the peak of that chant, absolutely you have outrageous. No idea so it was like, look at this. This is fantastic scenes in the crowd. The Everyone's jumping in the North Terrace. Unreal. I've got great photos with me and Jeff Lord uh, after that game, after the, um, the, the um, New Zealand Knights game. And great photos with Adrian Caceres as well. He and I had a really big one as well after that. And Archie Thompson. Is Adrian Caceres Adrian. in jail now? Yes, Adrian Caceres had a bit of a rough trot. He uh, went back to Perth and started hanging out with associates of Ben Cousins, I believe. Yeah, unfortunate. Perth is no good. <laughs> so Brenton Ray saying it was also mental on Grand Final Day. Yeah, I do remember that being pretty mental. The North East. How, can you can you let us know how how the trains were that day, Brenton? <laughs> Actually, when I when I was putting together my um, and I was uh, I did remember that the um, that game against Perth Glory at Cadinia Park was one of the hottest days I ever remembered. Going to the football, I actually looked up the uh, looked up when the game was, and then looked up the the weather for that day, and um, I felt, I did a bit of Brenton Ray style reconnaissance there. I was looking at everything about Australia and Melbourne that day on uh, January second of twenty fifteen. Avalon Port uh, recorded 44 degrees that day. The um, trains someone were asked, out. Someone, sorry, someone just asked, which is, takes me back to um, to 2018 when we were playing against Sydney. Um, Nathan Summit asked, how close was anyone last season to booking tickets in advance to the Perth Grand Final? Actually, yeah, last season. Um, if we're assuming we would have been playing in it. Um, but it does take me back. I think it was the the, the, the year before, and everyone was booking tickets um, at the semi final um, to Newcastle to Sydney, trying to get on. And then um, I think people were booking tickets in injury time of regular time, and yep. then <laughs> Terry Owen Turner uh, scores an own goal, and and people that have booked their flights thinking they got ahead of the, the yeah. trend before the prices were going to inflate. Uh, they were the smart were losing ones, their minds. Yeah, they, they end up um, eventually, eventually uh, getting the the right result. But uh, yeah, I, I remember the the bedlam afterwards. I, I had my finger on the trigger for us to all three of us to go up to Newey yep. uh, when that all happened. And as soon as you know, I 
kept my cool and, you know, Antonis' own goal. And I was like, oh, this is not going to happen. As soon as we won the game, I was on the site doing it, and it just all fell to shit. In the end, we end up flying to Sydney. Go on, mate. Yep. Yes, I was going to say, we were giving you a bit of hard time too. We yes, you were. Say, Book the fucking tickets, Dave! Book the tickets! Book the fucking tickets, Dave! Book the tickets! Book the tickets! <laughs> Jason and I were together, and it, you were just like, I don't know what's happening, it's not working! And we're like, just fucking book it! <laughs> Should have called the owl. Um... <laughs> Oh look, another flashpoint. This is this is the this is the part where Yanko is clearly, clearly you know, just losing his cool because the game's not going well for him. Getting bossed by Ansel and Del Pierre. Unbeatable in the air on this day, those two. What Boys, a combination. We're, actually, we're getting train updates from that day. <laughs> train was unbearable. <laughs> Thank you, Brenton. After the game ended uh, because Richmond Collingwood was on the G that day, I believe. Um, line to get onto the platform, backed up into Yarra Park. Uh, yeah, some people caught the bus up to uh, to Sydney for, or to Newcastle for the grand final, about 15 hours. Um, remember doing the bus back in back in the early days, season two and season three, catching Adelaide, the bus Adelaide and Sydney. Um, used to be organised by like 15-year-old kids. Um, if anyone asks what's wrong with the victory Simo these days, and yeah, Rusty there's not, and all there's those not boys. enough kids doing there's not enough kids doing that kind of shit these days. Sixteen year old kids booking buses, buses busloads yeah. of people to go up to um to away games for people that can't really afford it or school kids can't afford it. I remember going on an away trip for I think it was like sixty bucks total um, on a bus and just you know, causing causing chaos in the, uh, the the city centre all day in Adelaide. One of the best away trips, two thousand and six, because of just how many people were there and. Um, made possible by, by a couple of 16-year-old kids that organise buses. Oh, we've got a bit of a CNN moment here. We've got Dave's kid in the back. <laughs> Come here, Sam. Come. Hello, Sammy. <laughs> Hello, Sammy. Talk in the microphone. Hi. 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 Hey, hey Sammy. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Hello. Put your friends on. Hi. Hey, Sammy. Hi. Hi, Sammy. How are you, mate? Hey, Sammy. What would you have for dinner, mate? Daddy's got to get back to work. That is how you spell it. Good on you, mate. Shut the door. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Little champ. Oh, oh, slam. Terry Antonis, boys. Terry Antonis, about we to spoke come about on. him. Oh, yeah, he's, he's about yep. to come on. He'll just come on. Did he run in to tell you how he's learned how to spell footy? Yep. That's so uh, good. Un unfortunate, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> There's none of it to watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been yeah, playing a fair he, bit He's probably at that backyard. age now. He's probably at that age now. He could probably take him to the footy, right? Well, well, I mean, you know, you hate. When you're discussing what's happening in the world right now, you hate to make it all about yourself, but I, I literally had enrolled Sam into Mini Roos. You know, he's yep. turning five in uh, a couple of months, and I enrolled him down at East Bentley, and I thought, you know, this is, you know, he's been playing like this kids' program, you know, soccer time kids, which has been all right, but it's not, you know, playing for a club. So needless to say, I mean, look, when we come back to the, this whole topic of, what you know, the coronavirus, like, Community clubs like that, as you know, we, we've talked about the A League and the impact of professional sport, but it's going to kill the grassroots as well, you know. And it's a real blow. Uh, look, obviously, when we talk about this, you know, at no point is health not the number one thing, and it's right that all this is happening. It's right, um, but yeah, you know, my heart goes out to all the people involved in community football, you know, who. Are, yeah, it's it's going to be a tough, tough period. We probably won't see any football uh, at all across the winter months. Um, I mean, it all depends how we uh, how we come out of it and how long. Because yeah, it could be could be a while. I'm hearing kids won't go back to school until July. So, well, this is the best chance for. The oh, oh. Yeah, this is Ooh. the thing. I I, I, yeah, right, I don't right. know why we're we're still trying to um to talk about football coming back. 
this season, I, I think there's more of a chance of it eating into next season than it is even you know, getting to a point where we can play football again this season. So, um, yeah, I think we're we're settling in for a really long stint of uh, of no sport isolation. Hang on, Jason. Yeah. Isn't isn't America open for business? At Easter? In two weeks, yeah. Donald Trump wants to open America up for business in two weeks. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to try and get out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, you should just pack up and come back, mate. Yeah. Bring your uh, family over here. Well, the plan was yep. to come back probably around about October, November, but um, that's going to be that's going to be extended out because of, uh, of what's happening. My visa application probably is going to take a little while longer to get approved and take a little while before I can actually come back because I'm actually not allowed to come back into Australia until my residency here is approved. So I'm, I'm really in purgatory. Wow. I'm, I'm also in purgatory because I have no social security number here. So I have no uh, medical insurance Jesus. here. I'm basically kind of just stuck in the middle. If I get coronavirus, although it's not going to affect me too much, but I can't actually even go get tested for it unless I want to pay 600 American or something. So... Yeah, not. I, I got to be real careful because I I can't uh, I can't get it. Uh, so yeah, I stay locked inside my house at the moment. Um, so as you see, they, a Sydney FC keep, fan, not too happy. They keep panning to that particular yeah. Sydney fan. <laughs> Doesn't look too happy. But at this yeah, at this stage in proceedings, if we we're to just soak it all in, we're we're in about seventy eighth minute and seventy ninth minute or roughly no, yeah, seventy eighth, and it's like. Yep it's still anyone's game because, you know, despite yeah. our dominance, we haven't put a second goal in. Yeah. Uh, Sydney are starting to actually gain some form of rhythm. Keeping, yeah, and here we go, free kick, FBK. Anyone know what FBK is up to? Because we know, we, we know uh, he went to um, Nana yeah, Wadding. Not, not 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 I think he's still there. Well, he's, he's, he's still there, still so he must be coaching. He's still involved in Victorian football, yeah. Playing. Yeah, okay. I'm glad he's not been lost to the game in this state. I, I love I love he's that. He's such a wonderful um, there's nothing character. Better. Yeah, there's nothing better when you have a, a foreigner sign and come over and not only love the club, but love the city and, and want to stay here and, and be a big health fella. Um, no stranger to the Crown Casino poker room. I've played poker against him a few times. I think he was famously <laughs> there um, one Champions League night when he was left out of the squad. He was, uh, he was there on a match day uh, playing some poker instead of watching the boys uh, kick around that day. So, uh, yeah, Fidbe Cuffler, still in Melbourne, I believe, gave us one of the, uh, once again, another all-time interview on, on For Fuck's Sake um, when he was, I think, about 12 months on from, from this point. Yeah, kind of on the scrap heap. Just the real yeah, decline that saying, season. Someone saying he's still at Nana as a youth coach. There you yeah, go. Uh, brilliant. Georgievsky, yellow card, uh, coming out of that recent bit of play. Oh, mate, I'm going to... I'm going to just uh, have a little toilet break before we okay. uh, get into the uh, the most important part of the game the coming 10 up. 10 minutes, yeah. All right. All right. Enjoy, Dave. I, I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a bit um, upset that Santino's just... He, he's that guy yeah. that just won't, won't ring into SEN. We'll just fire off 500 text messages a day. He's been very active on the chat, Santino, but no calls. No said, calls. Yeah. You've got about He's, um, 12, 13 minutes to call in before we end the stream. So if you want to call in anyone, the number is on the screen. Call in on WhatsApp. It is a free call. Um, just put that plus one at the start. Um, Cameron McKenzie has been good with the questions today. What is your favorite squad player? So I think he's referring to he says mine's Evan Berg. I'm not too sure he's taking the piss there or not. Um, but does he refer to does he refer to like squad players as in like a I guess a kind of Fringe. unheralded average Joe? Yeah. Who who is your favourite squad player? It's a good question. Yeah, that is that is. It's going to take me a little while to to go through the vault. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't really feel like Melbourne Victory's ever been a club that's had great bench depth. No. Like, with, we've either always had a really good starting 11 or a shit starting 11. It's just like this year. Shit players. We've had 
shit players or we've got a good 11 that's going to win something and then okay subs. Yeah. Um, like the subs for, like even the subs for this year, Thompson, Connor Payne, Mahazi, Geria Turnbull. Um, I literally don't know. I, 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 actually I think can't answer Archie, this question. I think Archie Thompson chipped in for 10 goals this season, I think. So he was actually a pretty decent bench player. He, he was very reluctant to accept the role as a bench player, Archie Thompson, this season. But um, I think he scored about ten goals. So one of his yeah, best I, I just still wouldn't call him a squad. No, I still wouldn't call him a squad player though. Um, I I really really am struggling with this one. I I, I, I don't know if it, if it's a facetious question. Um, like the Evan Berger with the Evan Berger answer I'd probably say someone like a Julius Davies um, the wonder oh, kid the wonder, yes. the, one, the wonder kid that we got that played youth football for Bayern Munich Bayern. Yeah. and was fucking putrid so it's very much a Casper Tafta type player yeah so uh, I think we're coming up on the goal close to I think this might be it yeah, just about. Yep. Here we go. Fed Big Health could have scored it. 2 0. <laughs> Costa Barbarusis makes it 2 0 for Melbourne Victory in the Grand I'm not Final. celebrating. Surely, I'm not celebrating. Surely the Victory have won it from here. An unassailable lead. Oh, it still hurts that he left. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it hurts that Fantastic he left because he was an absolute crowd. superstar. Oh, he can sense the touch of Andy Harper. Oh, he's so... Oh, he's so such defeated. a prick. <laughs> Crestfallen voice. Very lucky this goal in the end because I think maybe Calfello should have scored. Oh, no, nah, maybe the angle was too tight. But luckily Do you enough... know what, Calfella could have had a couple in this game because you, you think back to that first goal that Barisha scored, he was wide open. Yeah. And Barisha took the shot instinctively. He took the shot and he nailed it. But Cal Feller was wide open uh, and, and would have slotted away in an empty net. Public service announcement for the Bucks: If um, in these hard times... Don't spend your forty-seven or forty-eight dollars on a VB or a Melbourne. Get 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 yourself a slab of these goat cans from Dan Murphy's. Forty-seven bucks. It's not the greatest beer on the planet, but it's a hell of a lot better than uh, some of the swill of the the CUB breweries out there. I don't mind uh, the CUB breweries. You're a beer snob. Yeah. I don't mind it. Yeah. Buds is a big fan of the goat cans. Yeah, I think Buds Buds is uh, uh, very open-minded to all types of beers. Not quite the beer snob that you are, Dave. Um, you can see Buds sinking uh, any variety of slab on any particular day. Uh, he loves That's it. correct. That's, That's correct. I'll drink. I'll drink Carlton Draft and VB as well, but only when it's free, free. and there's no other choice. <laughs> So um, I still I love a cold carton draft sometimes at a pub too. But you know, if I'm now, buying beer for my house, Rashid Mahazi, what a story! Yeah, Look, wow, he's reinvented himself into an an absolute model citizen. Doing well in Korea. Yeah, he's killing it. <laughs> he was Someone's saying the um. The breweries are doing takeaways, so uh, if you're if you're looking, instead of going to Dan Murphy's, uh, go to your, your breweries. Also, go to your local pubs as well. Don't um, don't give your money to to Dan Murphy's if you're in the inner city. Um, a lot of these pubs are possibly not going to survive. So uh, do what you can and, and get your takeaways from local pubs instead of. Uh, and Murphy's. and also also make sure you grab some takeaways from our friends at Temple Brew House. Yeah, in Western Western Street, Brunswick. Mahazi about to come on. The fans on the the Facebook comments are excited by Mahazi. Yes, he's um he's a gun. He's probably up there with the best squad players. Costa Barbarossa chant going in the background as well. We'll just let this uh, play out. 
player. Okay, actually, that's, that's up there with one of the best chances as well because everyone gets involved. Yeah, I, um, I started that one. You started that one? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Yep. Mahazi comes on. Okay, Finkler is coming off. Good shift by Guy Finkler, of course. Du, 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 du. We're also pretty close now to the Carl Valeri red card. Would help I love if I wasn't on mute. I just mentioned, yeah, the Carl Valeri. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway, go on, buds. <laughs> I love I love these Santino messages that he sends that just say things like Jace. Yeah, Santino, yeah. call in, call in. <laughs> Come on, call Santino. In. Do it, mate. Santino. Do it. The uh, the main event. The old meat in the sandwich. Here we go. He's Kicks it away. Can't, you can't hear anything, Carl run. Larry says. You can't hear anything. I tend to believe that. There's no point There's no point in time wasting me 2-0 up with three minutes to go. Come on. Now Santero's yeah. trying to jump up support in the comments. Who wants me to call in? Now, did, <laughs> Here we no, go. We've got, we've got a call. You just do it, mate. We've got a did call. Did Carl Valeri get a red in the grand final and then follow it up next year with a red in the FFA Cup final? He, he and did wasn't indeed. allowed to come out and lift the trophy? Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Maybe he San, like Santino. Him. Santino, how are you, mate? How are you, Jace? I'm good, Ooh, mate. mate. Uh, That's bit... good. How's, uh, how's LA and all that? Oh, it's all right, mate. Um, you know, doing what I can in isolation. <laughs> um, yeah, true. What, uh, um, have you been enjoying the live stream? Yeah, I loved it. No, it's still going. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were your memories of the day, Santino, in 2015? Uh, I went with my cousin, Matt. We were sitting in the corner <laughs> up North End. And that's it. That's it. Did, did, you, um, <laughs> did you party afterwards? No, I not really. Caught the train back to Geelong. Oh, you're in Geelong, right? <laughs> yeah. Buds is loving it. Um, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's loving How's it. How's Buds like, going? Buds is alright. He's um, <laughs> he's, he's hysterical. <laughs> I think I think yeah. Buds is just happy that you've called in. You, you've been commenting, yeah, yeah. commenting for you've the last two hours. You've made his day, Tino. You made All his day. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, Santino, thank you so much for calling in. Alright, catch you, mate. Thanks, guys. But cheerio, Tino. Thank you, Santino. He's called in finally. Only took him two hours. Thank you, Santino. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, boys, we're this not is, far this away. Is, this is the greatest, this is the greatest moment here of all comes. time. Here it is. Here, here it comes. is. Here he comes. Oh. Holy <laughs> Broxham. <laughs> I have never, ever gone so fucking absolutely yeah. batshit ballistic Bananas. in my life on a terrace <laughs> than went that in. It was like, oh, my God, Broxham scored. Oh, my God, Broxham scored. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the run that he made, the run that he made for that. And, and and in the end, when the ball sort of ended up with him, it, it was actually not intended for him as well. It was just incredible. Fuck, this was good, wasn't it? Cal Fala, what a yeah, ball. Fella, like, I, don't, I still don't like, know how Broxham, I still don't know how Broxham made the run, got to the ball and finished it. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a goal by Lee Broxham to wrap things up. And here comes Archie five. Thompson. Archie Thompson. Oh, poor Arch. And it was all about him. This was the best thing for Archie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, best. I am three-time A-League champion. <laughs> I play three grand finals, go three goal. <laughs> Archie Thompson. Da, 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 da. You fucking pay me money. 
<laughs> there he goes, hugging the bench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael Turnbull, come here, fucking come here, Turnbull. <laughs> Oh, we are I love champions. this club, but the fans, they love me. <laughs> this so is the greatest great club. Guy. <laughs> oh, how good was it? Like, the it's whole done. place, everyone was going fucking ballistic except Santino and his cousin who just got the train back to Geelong. <laughs> It's a long, it's a long trip back to Geelong. It's been all victory today. Yeah, the cancel comes off. She goes slow at that time of night. She does, especially, uh, yeah, especially back to Geelong. <sighs> We've been a rocking train though. The uh, the old velocity. There wouldn't be a, a quiet carriage in sight that night. That's for sure. Safe in the box again, Nick Ansel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently we've got. Um, apparently we got a notification. Daniel Georgeski is watching. Cheers to uh, yeah. to Danny. Yeah. Mr. Georgievsky, mate, I tell you, come back to the Vark. We miss you. you. Please come back, Daniel. Please. Kev's gone now. You can come back. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Hey, Danny, if you want to call in for the last few minutes. The, the numbers on the screen calling on WhatsApp, it would be unbelievable if we get one of the grand final heroes to, uh, to give us a call and give us a, a talk through what that day was like and what the night was like. That would be uh, immense to finish off the live stream. I'll tell you what, I'd happily catch the virus if, if, if he was to call. <laughs> wow. Dave wants the Rona. Come on, Danny. Give me the Plus Rona, one. Danny. Give me the Rona. I'll tell you what, they better go harder. <laughs> <laughs> this is training. This is the cafe. <laughs> this is my wife. Shut up, Andy Harper. I've had enough of you. Fucking Harper, dickhead. Shut up. Oh. Uh, through, through gritted teeth, he says that. Um, someone Jason, just asked. Jason. Someone just asked if we're going to show the Frank Lowy incident. It is. It oh, is of on. We are. It is on at the end. Like, but it's like ten minutes later. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Depends how many of you are still watching after the final whistle. Yeah. I guess if there's only five people, then I think my I've got to put in a shift once we're done here with yeah. the uh, family. Maybe put the oh, kids to bed or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I can hang out for ten minutes after this. There we go. Champions. Melbourne Victory. Champions of Australia on, once hey. again for the third time. <laughs> Come on. Paul Trimboli. Trimmers. Relishing his uh, his year. job, <laughs> he did a good job that year. Not so much this year. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Dylan Ingle saying the best Georgievsky moment was when he stuck his middle finger up at the City Terrace after the Borussia equalised with the Derby in the 2015 season. Absolutely, that was uh, that was unbelievable. Huge. Yeah. yeah. All right, last question from Cameron McKenzie. What's your favourite victory moment of all time, boys? Uh, mine is the Broxham goal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In that game was the question? Or just no, ever? Your, your, your best victory moment ever. Oh, look, I, I probably have to say that Archie Thompson winner in the derby um, at the death. Just because I was so down in the dumps at the time, um, thinking the game was cooked and just the sheer exhilaration. I mean, I was just up there as well. So hard. It's been so we've been blessed 
as a club, as, as a bunch of fans with how much we've had. We should never forget that. Um, 15, 16 years, we've had a lot of good times. Uh, oh, Costa. There was also, Jason, that time that I was at the urinal in Club 23 after the victory in business day. And um, Jeff Lord walked up and was singing a song and asked me if I knew what the song was. I said I didn't know and he called me a fucking idiot. That was probably one of my <laughs> victory moments of all time too. Uh, yeah, I reckon my there's people coming in saying that uh, their favourite moment was uh, the James Robinson header. Um, I tend to agree with that. I think that was one of my favourite moments. Oh, yeah, that's big a, one. That's a great call. Yeah. I'd like to end a few more before I finish as well because you can't match the feeling. Keep on playing like that, I'm sure you will. Enjoy. Thank you, <laughs> A bit of an awkward... Uh... Here we go, Bess. Well, here, here we go, here we go. I can't believe it. First of all, I have to thank God. Yeah. And I want to thank this club, the team, the family... The team, the fans. I love the fans. <laughs> There's Piet. Yeah. Nice. Here we are. You fucking pay me money. I give you goals. We deserve so much this year. Does it really get any better than this? You won the double. Absolutely phenomenal way to wrap up the season. No, uh, look, uh, better is not possible. We, we play a great season. You know, we are the best attacking uh, team. The best no, the scenes with that uh, Pietro and uh, Musky were pretty yeah. good. Up yet. Uh, oh, I'm uh, really going to stop watching the delayed one. You fucking said it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> What a king. What a king. Nilsy. How good is it? Mate, it's absolutely. Oh, so, 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 best basically said that he's only ever felt this feeling everywhere else that he's played. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to that dude if you're watching the stream. It's probably the most pixelated, best best quality res thing I've seen today. <laughs> oh, mate. All right, we've, we've got people dropping off, so I reckon we'll probably wrap it yeah. up here. Yeah. You can always rely on Mark Milligan yeah. for, for some good cliched <laughs> platitudes at the end. Yeah, so, um, credit, boys. yeah, so before we sign off, um, first and foremost, thank you to our Patreon supporters who made this all possible today with the software. Um, thank you so much for yeah giving us the ability to make this podcast uh, you know good and, and veering off into different directions. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it, um, something a little bit different in these uncertain times. Uh, boys, thank you for taking time out in uh, late Sunday evening to, um, to sit with me and watch a game. Uh, it's ticking over just 2 a.m. in L.A., so I'm about to go to bed. But thank you so much, guys, for taking the time out. And uh, maybe we'll do it again next week. Well done, Jace. getting it all happening, mate. Well done, Jace. Yeah, cool. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, yeah, if you like what you saw, leave us a comment. Um, let us know what you want to see next week if we do the same thing. So uh, thank you all, and uh, goodbye. On the Vark. On the Vark. On the Vark.